and it begins. As always, thank you for listening to Headbangers and Hooligans. It's yours truly, Scumalicious. And this is where we, for real this time, I, I've said it a bunch of times, but this is where we literally take over the internet. Right? We got this. Is it a little scary? Yeah, it's scary for Joe Rogan. Because he knows, he's like, oh my God, that scumalicious is coming for me. Uh, let's just hope. I mean, if I can get a quarter as popular as he does, I'd be doing good. Uh, um, but hopefully, uh, as I mentioned before, the show will be entertaining enough. You know, you tell your friends and family about it and say, you have to tune into this lunatic. Yeah, you just have to. Uh, but I feel good about this. Uh, got the power of mom watching from above. And I know what she's doing. She's like, you crazy bastard. You really did it, didn't you? Uh, but I feel good about it. And uh, we're not fun with it. At least I, I hope that you have fun with it. Um, and I'm still going to talk about music. But I'm going to throw some other stuff in there. And you'll get some laughs. Let's hope. Uh, and we are going to kick it off with some music. Pulley. And I mentioned the show. Uh, and how amazing it was. It kind of feels like. It, it's surreal. Right. Uh, it was over a week ago. But wow. After 23 years. I finally fucking see. This band. And. They're just all. Really cool guys. Chris Daly, the drummer, so awesome. Thank you for the drumstick. You kick ass. Uh, but Scott Radinsky, what a fucking performance. It was so awesome to meet him. And this, what the first time I heard Pulley, I was like, wow, I really dig this shit. It was on a uh, like a Punk Bite CD, compilation CD, a bunch of different bands, right? And when you hear the word punk, you, you know, you get this image in your head of three chords and guys saying, go fuck yourself. And Pulley, they'll do that from time to time, but they can play. Great musicians. And Scott Radinsky, great lyrics. Like I just connected with the shit that he was singing. And uh, what an amazing talent the guy is, seriously. And he sounded great. And I get it all the time. Jeez, would you quit sucking that dude's balls? No, I'm not. He was really good. Uh, still getting after it after all these years, two decades. Uh, but I just wanted to touch on him just a little bit. Okay. He was drafted by the Chicago White Sox when he was 18, third round. And I, I believe he ended up pitching for 11 years. Uh, like four different teams, uh, Indians, Dodgers, I think, Cardinals. Uh, and then he was a coach. And the whole time he was doing that, what was he doing? He was singing in a band. He started out with uh, Scared Straight. Then he sang with 10-Foot Pole, uh, Swill, the uh, debut album, and then uh, Rev, which is a great album. I think it's 10-Foot Pole's best album. And they aren't the same without him singing. They just aren't. And I like Ten Football, just not the same band. 
And then, of course, he went to the band that just fucking slays it every time, Pulley. Uh, and then on top of it, top of that, he was a joint owner of Skate Lab from 97 until this year. It closed down, and, uh, you know, it's a skateboarding museum. It's got the Skateboarding Hall of Fame. Just, like, I know back in the day a lot of, a lot of people would rip on him, just a little bit. Uh, you know, talk about, oh, he's, he's not a true punk rocker because he plays baseball. No, that just means he's smart because he's going to get paid a lot of money to play a sport and then he can sing whatever the fuck he wants to sing. And hooray for me, the song. You know, the line in there, I don't write this music with intent to pay my bills. Uh, just all I'm saying is, Nothing but respect. Just fucking awesome. That's, yeah, it's a love fest. And those some people are like, would you shut the fuck up already? I can't. I'm like a little kid. Uh, and then, this was, this was interesting. Then, when me and Trailer Trash got back the next day from Chicago, I looked, I was looking online, and I seen that New Found Glory, that same New Found Glory, is going to be playing here in Des Moines at Woolies on the 7th, I believe. And I'm going to surprise you with something here. Yeah, I'm sure some people are like, oh, what? How are you going to rip on them this time? I'm actually not going to rip on them. I didn't know they were even still fucking playing. I thought they were broke up. I didn't know they were still playing and recording music. I'll give them credit. Shit, they're still going. I'm not a fan. I don't like their music. I'm trying to picture in my mind, who, what are the fans going to be like at that show? Like, what is that crowd going to look like? Who listens to Newfound Glory? What, 30-somethings? Like, people that are like 34? I don't know. I'm just asking. Uh, but regardless, being serious here, hey, stuck with it. Um, I don't know how much money they're making. Are they making as much as when they first started out? I don't know, because they were a lot more popular... 10, 15 years ago. Uh, but you have to respect somebody that's chasing their dream and doing it. They're Hey, they're doing more than I am. So, a uh, little shout out to them. I shocked you. Just a little bit right there. Uh, and then on top of that, another band. Um, I believe they're going to be here in December. Cannibal Corpse. Not going to get into the death metal thing because I'm not a huge fan of it. Uh, but Cannibal Corpse, my God. What are those guys, like 60? And I'm joking here, but holy shit, right? Still getting after it. Uh, I know online some people rip on the drummer. I Can you fucking play that fast? I can't. Uh, but they just seem like really cool guys in their interviews. I know the one guitarist flipped out, what was it, a year or two ago and with the cops. And he had a shitload of guns in his house or whatever. But uh, got to respect that band too. Uh, just holy shit. And think of how many years they've been playing, playing that crazy fucking music. And... Still getting after it. Uh, just like Newfound Glory, not saying I'm a fan of their music, but I respect them. Still doing their shit. God. This is a... Just, it really kind of... Actually, I think it made me fart when I... 
the MTV Europe Music Awards. I know, you're like, oh my God, I didn't know those were on. Yeah, we're just on the edge of our seats, right? First off, MTV is a shit pile of pig shit. And that's a lot of shit that I just said right there. But seriously, they don't even play videos anymore. All they play is real stupid reality shows like Catfished. Have you, have, have you ever watched that? Are, how stupid are people? Oh, fuck, man. But anyway, uh, you know, they have that and the, what? The show with the 13-year-old chicks that are pregnant. Huh. But they still have an, an award show. And we are thankful for that, right? But these MTV Your Music Awards... <laughs> they actually had an award for the best look, which has nothing to do with music, right? Who cares how good somebody looks when it comes to music? What is this, a fashion show? How ridiculous is that? Seriously. Well, Halsey is the one that took that took that award. Uh, then they had the, the best hip-hop artist. Oh, I cannot lie on this one. I don't know all the new rappers, but Nicki Minaj is the best rapper? Best hip-hop artist? Really? Best rock group? Green Day. Who... Haven't been good for a long time, in my opinion. Have you heard their new song? Is that the Vines? The Strokes? What is that? It doesn't even sound like him. What the hell is he trying to do on that song? Uh, and the best live artist. BTS. Korean boy band. And they also... And they won in another award. Not just one, they won two. BTS did. They just killing it, right? Biggest fans. Get an award for having the biggest fans. I just I just found it amusing, like entertaining, I guess. I'll use that word again. And there you go. That's all. That's all the music I'm gonna talk about. For today. Because that was a lot to take in. I know. Especially after you heard all the. Uh, BTS. Really. And I had to check them out on YouTube. Because I didn't know who the hell they were. I really didn't. Maybe I'm showing my age. I don't know. Sounds like an STD. Oh I've got BTS. But. Uh, Netflix. Yeah. We transition right into it. They are making a movie about Gigi Allen. And if you don't know Gigi Allen, uh, he used to shit on stage. He used to masturbate on stage. He used, to, he used to shit and then throw the shit at the people in the crowd. And then jump off the stage and start fights and get punched and cut himself, all this shit. Uh, and then suck on the mic and, you know. Uh, and I actually had one of his CDs. I owned one of his CDs because I was like, I can't believe somebody like this exists. Uh, and that album, I don't have it anymore. I uh, sold it to the Half Price Bookstore. So negative. It was so hard to get get through that album. You're like, holy shit. What the fuck happened to this guy? Just, the lyrics are just so depressing. And he he always mentioned that he was going to die of a heroin overdose and, you know, kill himself. And I think he was uh, 37 when he finally died. Uh, but they are making a movie about him. And Christian Bale is playing him. 
which is interesting. And I've seen a couple pictures, and he looks just like G.G. Allen. I'm pretty sure he'll do a good job. I think he's a pretty good actor. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they do that, though. Right? Is Christian Bale going to shit on stage? Is he going to masturbate? I, I doubt it. Uh, I I do know this. There was a documentary. I did not see it about Gigi Allen. It was on Showtime. I read about it uh, on a website somewhere. And a lot of people were always wondering, how did he get so angry and fucked up, right? What, what happened to him that made him the way he was? Well, it might have been his dad. When, uh, and I believe he and his brother were seven or eight at the time. His dad locked him in a room, both of them in a room, and made them watch him rape their mother. Think about that. Uh, And I'm not making an excuse for the guy. Uh, There's no excuse for the way he acted. Right? And... On top of that, the people that went and seen him, why would you pay to see that shit? Seriously. Uh, But his dad was just a gigantic asshole. You know, and I guess, hey, could you just imagine that? Oh, that would probably destroy you. Uh, But I am really looking forward to that because I want to see how they do it and... uh, I still think Christian Bell do a great job uh, playing a fucking lunatic, for real. Uh, and then, The Irishman, right? Uh, Al Pacino, Joe Pesci, Robert De Niro. I think the last time we'll ever see all three of them in a movie together. That's a huge deal. And... They have the uh, de-aging thing going on, which is crazy. These movies now where they got the, where they take away a person's age and they look like, you know, a 70-year-old guy looks like he's 35. Hollywood is so fucked up, but it's so entertaining at the same time, right? Like, holy shit, the technology. But uh, I was reading some of the early reviews on it, uh, Really long, three and a half hours, but we know this before we go into a movie like that. It's going to be long. You already know, if the mafia is connected to the movie, this part of the story, you already know you're in for a three-hour event here. That's just how it works. Uh, It will be cool to see all three of them together. Uh, Robert De Niro is probably my least favorite of the three. Listen. He's still an amazing actor. I I ain't going to take that away from him. Uh, He just has annoyed me over the last couple years. But he's a great actor, right? And uh, love Joe Pesci. But Al Pacino, he's the king, right? You cannot beat Scent of a Woman. When you're watching that, you're thinking, man, Al Pacino's really blind. That's He was amazing in that movie. Uh, just, you know, I'm almost getting choked up. Now, one thing that I'm a little irritated about, though, how about Ray Liotta? You could have gave him a little part. Come on, throw him in there, too. I love me some Ray Liotta. Uh, definitely looking forward, uh, to both of those movies. Now, I don't know when the, uh, Gigi Allen movie's coming out or when they, uh, finish filming it, but uh, Netflix, huh? Getting after it, without a doubt. <laughs> oh, and this one, I there's three movie reviewers that I watch on YouTube, like faithfully, and I'm not saying I always agree with what they say about the movies or how they rate them, but there's three guys that. I really enjoy watching uh, Tyrone Magnus, Jeremy Johns, Chris Stuckman. Uh, and 
I think Chris Stuckman is my favorite of the three. I like all three, but, you know, Stuckman is really, really good at it, like breaking down a film and uh, just diving into it. He knows how to... He knows how to do that really well. And he also has this thing where he he does hilariosity reviews. And they are movies that are so fucking terrible that they're great. You know, like The Room, uh, Samurai Cop. Uh, just those movies that you watch and you're like, who is the lunatic, I'm using that word a lot tonight, seriously, who is the lunatic that made this movie? Like, who wrote it? Because the script is terrible, the acting is horrible, but you have to continue to watch it because it's fascinating. It really is, right? Uh, But he has a new hilariosity movie up there and it's very new the fanatic have you heard of it i got it i got i can't lie i seen a trailer for it i seen one trailer for it john travolta that's right john travolta he's back our boy john revolting uh it's about an obsessed fan of this actor and John Travolta is an actor. You know, he plays an actor. But his fucking hair in this movie, it's so bad. It's beyond bad, right? Uh, And of course, he just overacts in some of these scenes. It's, as the kids would say, major cringe. You're embarrassed for him in a lot of these scenes. Uh... And you have to go get on YouTube and watch his breakdown of it because, oh, the movie, it starts out that Travolta goes into uh, a store and he's talking to the guy behind the counter, walks in, first line of the movie, I can't talk too long, I got to poo. So, you know when a movie's starting out like that, you're like, holy shit, we are in for something here, people. Uh, and who made it? Fred Durst, the wannabe rapper. He makes movies now, and they're not very good. But holy shit, is it entertaining? I'm telling you, take 20 minutes, watch uh, his review of it, because it really is entertaining. Yeah. Thanks for another movie, Revolting. And speaking of him, I'm not going to totally trash the guy, all right? He's made millions of dollars. He's fucking made a lot more money than I probably will ever see. But his career, okay, he's what, Saturday Night Fever? The disco shit. And then he was in, oh, yeah, Welcome Back, Kata, you know? Welcome back with his buddy Horshack. And then, uh, then we get the ever, ever, Legendary movie, Urban Cowboy. I love you, sissy. You know, I'm sorry I hit you. Get in that truck. I love you, sissy. Uh, and then he was in a movie where he was Olivia Newton-John, some 80s shit that I can't even remember. Of course, how could I forget he was in Greece? I mean, Greece wasn't too bad, you know. Uh, but then he made the comeback, right? Pulp Fiction. Everybody's like, he's back, he's back. And then he was popular there for a little bit, did some other movies where he was like the angel. Was it Michael? Yeah, and then a couple other movies. But his last two movies, the one he did is, he was John Gotti. Wow, pretty awful. And then this, it's, let's just say his career's been kind of mediocre. Which I, I, I would take that. Seriously. Mediocre? It's better than having a shit career. But some people just are like, Oh, I really... I love his acting. Okay. Hey, teach your own. But anyway. 
And then I seen a video too, and I remember hearing a little bit about this. And you can like this guy. I have opinions all the time. And I know everybody doesn't agree with them. And you have opinions. And it's our right to have our own opinions. Uh, but Bill Maher is the most annoying prick. One of the most annoying pricks I've ever seen in my life. I hated that show that he had on HBO. Uh, I've just never been a fan of his. And uh, it was on Collider Live. It's a it's a show about movies and TV and all that. It's an okay show. Uh, I like Christian Harloff, who was on it. He's not on it anymore. Friday, I think last Friday was his last day on there. But he was mentioning the story about Bill. Is it Maher? Am I saying it right? Or is it Maher? But anyway, Twitter, our favorite. We love Twitter, don't we? Twitter is entertaining. And trust me, I got another story on Twitter here in a little bit. But anyway, he made this tweet, and it was about Stan Lee. And Stan Lee, you know, of course died. And he was talking about all the fans because they were, you know, tweeting about him and, you know, how much missing him and all the great things he did. And he pretty much was ripping on this dead guy. And don't get me wrong. I've talked about it a lot. I'm not a huge fan of all these superhero movies. I think they're out of control. You know, I, I really do. Uh, trust me, I will never watch Captain Marvel. Okay, Brie Larson, you don't have to worry about this old white man going to watch it. I'm not going down that road right now, though. I've already bitched about her. But uh, I'm not going to rip on Stan Lee. I Obviously, he... He's do, he did some great things. You now he created Spider-Man and the Hulk and all these movies that they made from all the characters that he created. But basically, he's ripping on everyone these of these people, these uh, comic book people, because they they're worshiping this guy that you know uh, drew drew pictures. He is like, fuck you. Seriously. He's just an arrogant prick. And and when I said you can have an opinion that's different from mine, that's fine. But he's just a dick about it. Like he is so much better than everybody else. He just, I, I, like, I can't stand him. And I really can't. And this has nothing to do with politics either. Because I've had people mention that to me because they're like, oh, you don't like him because he's this. Or, you know. I don't care about that. He is just a, an arrogant prick. And I, I seen it when he had his show on, right? He just had to make sure that he made himself look better than anyone else on his show because he's so much smarter than everyone else. Well, guess what? He'll never make as much money as Stan Lee did. Ever. He won't even come close. Right? So go fuck yourself, Bill. Uh, but Twitter. <laughs> How many times have you heard me say this? That Twitter is a giant cesspool. And it really is. I think we all know that by this point. But it is so entertaining at the same time. I could literally, you know, for hours, just scroll through and watch people fight about the stupidest shit. You can actually start shit on there just to watch them fight, right? And they will go at each other's throats. And by the time they get done... They're not even arguing what they started arguing about. You know, well, your mom's a slut. Yeah, well, I fucked your dad. <laughs> it's so, it's just, it's just insane. Uh, but really the best, this is my advice. I mean, I have an account up there. Uh, 
you know, a few people check out the show from from Twitter. I mean, nobody of importance, I'm sure. Just a couple more lunatics like me. But anyway, I just go on there and, and read the tweets. But don't don't get an account. Because anytime you tweet something, you'll have somebody coming after you. It could be just a nice tweet, you know? Uh, man, it's so nice outside. Oh, yeah, really? Well, I wish I could enjoy the outside, but I'm too busy working, motherfucker. I, you just, seriously, you can't tweet anything without somebody just jumping down your throat. But, the story today, and I got to tell you. Jermaine Whitehead, okay. Even if you're not a fan of football, right? You, you will find this entertaining, I'm telling you. Jermaine Whitehead plays for the Cleveland Browns. They played the Denver Broncos yesterday. Well, Jermaine Whitehead didn't have a very good game. Missed a lot of tackles. This is just from stuff I've been reading. I didn't see the game. But after the game, one of the commentators that that did the game, he tweeted... Whitehead, Whitehead's tackling today is a joke, right? Well, you're on Twitter, so the minute you post something like that, whoever you went after, they're going to come back. And he did, and he came back big time. In fact, he went over the edge on this one. He said, come get in blood, bitch, made ass little boy. Don't get smoked. Fuck ass cracker. (laughs) Yeah, he... (laughs) Yeah, he did the race card. (laughs) I'm going to shoot your ass. And it just... It doesn't stop there, okay? This guy blew a fucking cork, right? And... Once again, social media, everyone sees these posts, right? You got to remember that. And he's an NFL player, right? This is, it, it's just crazy. Another guy, uh, another guy uh, tweeted that he sucked. And uh, Whitehead said, you know, he'd fuck him up any fucking day of the week, cracker. <laughs> I just... Then, this guy, and his Twitter handle is HateMe234, uh, and he lives in Cleveland there. Now, I remember uh, he hate me. It's like a foot, football player in that XFL or whatever, but th- this different guy. But he tweeted right at Whitehead, and he said, Fuck boy. The, the player ran for 110 yards and two touchdowns. Just calling him out, okay? Like, look, that guy ran right past you, and you couldn't tackle him. And Whitehead responds back with, don't get shot at, little bitch. Can you whoop my ass? Fuck football. Let me know when you need the address. And he posts his address, his home address. Basically... Telling that guy, come to my house so I can shoot you. And this, he hate me, 234 responds back with, you'd probably miss. Like his tackling. (laughs) Oh my goodness. No comeback on that one. That, my friends, is the ultimate slam. No cussing. Hey, you'd probably miss. Left him fucking speechless. Uh, and no surprise, he was cut today. And the Cleveland Browns said, you cannot do that. On You can't post stuff like that. And you can't. You can't threaten to kill people. All right? Uh, it's just, it's insane that the people, the, some of the stuff they post, that, you know, they don't, 
they don't think about it. And I, I, I post stupid stuff, but it, it's a joke. And, and half the people don't even pay attention to what I'm posting anyway, like on Facebook and thing, stuff like that. But uh, just, and I'm telling you if, you, if you get the time, go on Twitter and read, read the tweets and watch them guys going at each other. Wow. It's just, it's crazy. Now, and I know some people remember this. I used to have the Ask Maggot of the Week uh, on the Scum Report. Remember that? I used to do it on Saturdays, the live show. Least, I mean, it was pretty popular. At least 12 to 14 people every week tuned in. But, and I'm bringing that back, Ask Maggot of the Week. He's already won. Like, who's going to... Who's going to beat him on that? How are you going to... What is somebody going to do to top that? Holy shit. Yeah, he's already asked Mag of the Week. Hey, right? Unbelievable. And you know, speaking of the Scum Report, that's actually what this show is kind of going to be like, actually. I'm not saying it's a news show, all right? It's an entertainment show. And there you go. First show. Not my first show, but you know what I mean. And uh, hopefully you were entertained. And like I said, tell your friends and family. Tell them to get on the scumalicious train. We got to catch that Joe Rogan. All right. Take it easy. And if it's easy, take it twice. I'm out.